In the last century, more and more specialities of British industry have been on the decline. Whether it's related to environmental concerns or monetary loss, it's clear that England contains many ruins of what was once success in the field. In this episode, we are focusing on two prominent structures that have been abandoned for some time. Complete with control rooms, machinery and old forgotten architecture, this video shows off some of our heritage we are starting to forget. At six stories, the first site showcased in this episode can be seen for miles around. You'll also notice how it appears to have been chopped in half, which is because of its demolition process at the time. When we visited the same place recently, nothing remains where the structure once stood, except a vast gap. Positioned in the midst of a large industrial region, we had a good chance of being spotted by the perimeter security, so we made no mistake in being cautious as we headed towards the building, which was formerly a calcium plant. Over a No protection at all was on the property itself, but a red and white caution tape. Immediately we found our way inside and could begin scaling the immense structure. Above us was a network of machines, piping and walkways. Like a lot of these massive industrial places we visit, the theory of the building was simple. Take the steam from a chemical mix, purify it and produce a specific formula involving sodium carbonate that can be useful for many resources. It can help create crude oil, refrigeration, medical treatment, agricultural sprays and water treatment materials. In this case it was producing the correct concentrate of the chemicals that will be shipped off to nearby docks and sold off to where it was needed. As this building is part of a bigger process, we can't be too sure of its own construction date, but due to some writing on bricks outside the plant, we reckon it dates back to the late 50s and early 60s. It seems that it wouldn't last much longer either way, especially due to the demolition work. These bricks were barely holding up the towering building. Look at this. This is insane to me. Like. That is crazy. The fact that this is holding up all of this as well. Wow. A lot of the site's spare bolts and screws were stored in a shed-like workshop on the ground floor. With some of the signs we had seen already, the plant was big on the safety of its workers as you'd expect, and we even found eye wash liquid ready for use. We began to climb the building, but as we got higher up it was noticeable how unsafe and dangerous the calcium plant was at this stage in its time span. Probably due to the major hole in one side of it, it had been exposed to the weathers for months, so many walkways had crumbled and machines had dropped four or five floors to the ground. It was important that we took into account exactly where our feet were planted and what new obstacles were around us. All this machinery naturally had to be manned for its period of activity. Labelled centrally in the structure was the site's control room, with papers and other items remaining on the desk. 
Spending long hours in this modern room would have bored most workers, and we could see how they had stuck images and maps up, even to the panel itself, to make the space more interesting. It wasn't one of the best control rooms we have come into contact with, especially compared to the one featured later in this video, but it was fascinating still. They never clean the rubbish. I wonder who put the last bit of rubbish in the bin. Same with that one as well. When this plant became decommissioned, the company owning it left everything inside as they didn't need the expansive machinery anymore. Again, we aren't certain on a closure date, but to the state of deterioration the building is in, we'd assume it has been well over a decade. Progressing up a floor at a time, we noticed that each section seemed to open up a bit more, as there was less and less machinery. It's a confusing process in whole, but it begins away from this structure at a river. Here, the starting liquid of crude liquor is pumped into huge tanks. Then the effluent is sent to the top of the calcium plant through two tall evaporators, which are the cylindrical masses you see here. We'd assume that there were even more of these, but they have been taken out. These two are the only ones that are still here, and there is only one complete one on the top floor. Following this, the main impurity of the solution, salt, was let out when the liquor moved through the conical thickeners, back down to the bottom of the structure via rotary drum filters that would collect the right concentrate. It would end up in storage tanks outside, which would later be transported to the docks mentioned earlier. Finally we reached the highest floor of the plant, and it was easily my favourite part of the building. Large and open, we could appreciate the scale of the property and the intricate process that has been compacted into the six floors. Above the complete evaporator you can see on this top level a gantry crane which would have moved back and forth along the plants to fix machinery and replace parts. After spotting the ladder to the peak it was definitely necessary to see the full space from that height too. With no cabin, we can only assume this crane was manually operated away from the metal. Either way, the views we gathered from the summit made up for its lack of controls. It was time to head down and exit one major industrial site and go straight into another. For what this new red brick building loses in its size, it certainly makes up for in its historical value. Underneath a tipped pine tree which attempted to block off explorers from entering the grounds, we were transported into a complete time capsule hidden behind a private school. This site is located across the road from what was once a massive coal-fired power station that opened in the 1920s. Extended constantly through its time of use, a further two stations were added to the original one in the 1960s along with four cooling towers. 
Sadly, the main property was demolished in 1994 and replaced by a national prison, but this substation of the original 20s property was left behind. In recent years, the discovery of the remnant was made by some local explorers. After seeing what they had found, we had been wanting to visit the site for a long time, and finally, we were on the explore. Just this glass panelled connecting bridge alone shows the industrial gem that is this location. Architecture like this won't be found in modern sites and it's bizarre that it's hiding away and not being toured or enclosed properly. Once inside the building we entered some original office spaces with a similar glass design like the bridge. Even the doors looked old as well as the tiled brickwork showcased along every wall. In these type of abandoned places, seeing a piece of furniture like this is amazing because you know it's been sat neglected for many years, maybe even decades, with little to no visitors. Across the other side of the bridge, the decay was extreme because of the windows letting in light. More architecture that clearly wasn't modernised could be spotted, like this staircase that led us into a huge warehouse section. Stripped and mossy green, we could tell that the place hadn't had many visitors through the years it had been abandoned. Over 20 years had passed and hanging light bulbs were untainted. On the fading white walls you could still make out colourful designs, some of which had almost disappeared entirely. When people were building this structure they wanted it to look impressive, but nowadays the efficiency is what matters and we don't see the craft the same way. The imprinted text was interesting as well and gave us an indication to what this part of the structure might have done. Obviously 30,000 volts is a powerful amount, so we assume that this part of the substation would have been full of resistors when it was active, as it reminded me of a similar room we had seen in a power station we looked at on our recent island trip this year. An old control panel took us towards the main attraction of the site, which was the control room for the original power station in all its glory. It was one of the trickiest rooms we have made our way into, but it was definitely worth it, and we realised that as soon as we entered. Covered with pigeon droppings and affected by water damage, the state of the lengthy panel isn't what matters. This room is a piece of history for the region it would have provided power to. We were taken away by the time capsule state the room was in after it had been vacant for more than two decades. Its dating was visible with the projected gauges and even the perspective that the panel had been designed with, as on each of the dials and buttons names of local streets had been used so the workers could communicate them to each other. The entire room, and particularly the difficulty required to access it, made this visit so captivating and a perfect showcase of British industry, as we watch it lose all that embedded it globally, in the likes of the care and consistency of the past compared to the lacking modernity now. Inhabited only by pigeons, we aren't sure what will happen to the timeless structure. A lot of its neighbouring buildings that survived demolition have been converted into schools and offices, so maybe it will follow suit. We find it so key to capturing these historic places before something like that occurs. Next time. In our next video we are continuing our discussion on religious decline as we take a look at two more ruined houses of God as they struggle to keep themselves upright. Thanks for watching our latest release, we hope you enjoyed it, if you did be sure to leave a like on the video to show your support, see you next time.